Welcome to Module 9, Mixing Media. A mixed media artwork is a painting, drawing, or sculpture which incorporates several types of medium in its execution. There are a variety of approaches to this technique, from transfers to screen prints to mixing drawing and painting elements. Mixed media gives the artist a level of freedom that one medium may not be capable of expressing. Mixed media process can be freeing to the beginning artist. This approach gives the artist the ability to merge the imagery of collage, the elements of drawing, and the textural qualities of paint into a singular piece. In this module, we'll explore how to use some household items as well as your painting kit to liven up your work using mixed media techniques. For an example on how mixing different mediums together can create a cohesive whole, let's examine the work of Jane Frank. Here the artist has constructed a scene from various found and altered materials. Using newspaper clippings, collage paper, and thick paint, Frank builds this abstracted landscape. Using source materials collected from the town newspaper, she connects the work to the location depicted. Her use of materials is just as important as their application. Going forward, think about the significance of the mediums you're using, as well as how to apply them to convey your message. We'll begin with getting our workspace ready. To protect your work surface, find a piece of paper or cardboard. These processes are incredibly messy, so it's best to protect your surface. We'll then grab our matte medium. If you do not have matte medium, I suggest buying a small tub of gel medium. You will want a clean, broad brush. For tape transfers, we will be using the cellophane packing tape. Finally, you may want to source some images to use in your mixed media piece. I've gathered some photocopies, comic books, and magazines for collage and transfers. Now let's move on to acrylic medium transfers. Acrylic medium transfers are great for getting an image bound to your surface easily using the same material your paint uses. Acrylic mediums use the same polymers in your paint as a binder. For this process you will need a toothbrush, acrylic medium, gel, liquid, matte medium, or semi-liquid matte. As a note, if you've been using airbrush fluid so far, you'll need to use a different medium. Airbrush fluid is too thin and will not produce the desired results. You'll also need an image, either photocopied or from another printed source. As a note, this technique will give you a mirrored or flipped image of your source. If you're printing out material, please note that you may want to mirror it before printing, especially if you're using text. Before you begin, lay down a protective piece of paper on your workspace. You can use newsprint, newspaper, or a waste piece of cardboard. The medium will get messy, and to properly coat your transfer, you will have to brush the acrylic medium past the edges of your image. So select your image. Begin by applying a layer of your acrylic medium to the image side of the paper. Use a broad brush and spread the medium from the middle of the image to the edge. Allow the image to dry. The medium may appear cloudy. If so, allow it to dry for a few more minutes before adding the next coat. You will want to add several coats before affixing your image to your work. The thicker the medium on your image, the more durable it will be once we try to remove the paper later on. Once the image is adequately covered, add one final layer of medium to glue the transfer to your surface. Next, place your image face down on your surface. Use a spoon to remove any air bubbles from the paper. You may want to place a piece of parchment paper over your image to keep everything clean. As you smooth the paper, it will also help the medium adhere to the surface much better, especially if you have a high toothed or rough grained paper. Once you have it smoothed out, place some weight on the image and wait for it to dry. Keep the parchment paper in place. As it dries, it will feel cold to the touch. It may take up to an hour before it's completely dry. You can use a hairdryer to speed up the process, but be aware if you heat up the medium, it may not dry correctly. Once the transfer is completely dry, begin by removing the paper backing. Use a spray bottle or slightly damped cloth to start removing the paper pulp. Continue gently removing the paper. The medium is fragile and it may stretch or tear, so use a light touch. Use a toothbrush to remove the final bits of paper from your image. The resulting transfer may be a bit cloudy, so to combat this, you can brush a little acrylic medium or PVA glue on top of it. If you're mounting your transfer on paper, be doubly careful as your painting surface may start tearing as well. In this case, use a light touch. Again, your image will be reversed, so avoid using text with this method unless you've previously mirrored your photo. 
we will begin our exploration into different techniques with tape transfers. Tape transfers are probably the easiest way to sample an image and apply it to your painting. This is a great way to get a transparent or translucent image into your work. For a tape transfer, you will need some packing tape, cellophane tape is the best. You'll need a small tub of water, a toothbrush, acrylic medium, either gel, liquid matte, or semi-liquid matte, and finally an image. It could be from any source, photocopied, or from another printed source. To create a tape transfer, you will lay your image face up. Cut strips of tape slightly larger than your image. Then apply the tape carefully over the image. It's best to start from one end of the image to the other, laying it down in a strip. There will be bubbles. Do not worry about removing them until step five. Continue laying strips of tape over the image until it's covered. It's best to overlap the tape by a quarter inch, otherwise your tape will separate the image. Once the image is covered, take a spoon and work the bubbles out of the tape. Make sure all bubbles are gone before we proceed to the next step. Once the bubbles have been worked out, remove the transfer from the parchment paper and begin trimming the excess tape. Once the image is ready, submerge it into a small container of room temperature water. Leave the image in the water until the paper becomes soft. Once the paper is soft, remove the image from the water. Set it on a paper towel or other drying surface. Since the paper is still soft, it will begin detaching from the tape. At this stage, we can start to peel off some of the paper backing off our transfer. While the paper is still wet, rub your finger or soft bristled toothbrush on the paper side of the image. The paper will start to peel up and separate from the cellophane. Use your finger or toothbrush to remove any remaining bits of paper. Do not use too much force as it may scrape the ink off the tape. Keep the transfer wet as you remove the paper from it. Let the image dry. You may have small filmy areas of paper visible as the transfer dries. If so, use the wet toothbrush to gently remove it. Once clean and dry, the sticky side of the tape will have the image fixed to it. Note, in this transfer process, your image will not be flipped. Other transfer processes will mirror your image. Now that our transfer is ready, I'll display how the transparency works by posting the image over parts of this American flag printout. The areas of darker value are a little harder to read on a dark hue like blue or red. Her face almost gets lost in these colors as well. Printing uses the white of the page for its whites, so they will not transfer onto your page. When placing your image, keep in mind how the background will affect your transfer. When your image is ready, use acrylic medium as glue. Apply the medium to the sticky side of the image, then apply the image to your painting. Let the glue dry before applying anything over it. Note that the tape will still have a bit of gloss to it. You can add some matte medium to take away the gloss. This will also help paint adhere to the surface of the transfer better. Now we'll move on to acrylic paint transfers. Acrylic paint transfers are the same as acrylic medium transfers, except you'll be using paint to achieve the transfer. This method can be a double-edged sword, as the paint is a little sturdier, but it's also opaque, so you'll need to consider how the colors of your photo transfer will interact with the colors of the paint you apply. Using white will provide a more accurate transfer color-wise, but you can experiment with different colors to create a unique image. For this demonstration, I've used a black and white image with a teal paint. Note, if you're using a slow drying paint, such as the Golden Open Acrylics, this will not work as well. So for this, the process is practically identical to the medium transfer. We'll use broad brushes and spread the medium from the middle of the image to the edge. Allow the image to dry. Once dry, add a subsequent coat of paint. You may want to add as many coats as possible of thick paint until you're satisfied with the durability of the transfer. I use three coats for the demonstration but apply as many coats as you feel comfortable with. For a surface, I'm using this small wood panel. While the transfer is still wet, I'll prep the panel with a little matte medium to allow the image to better bond with the surface. Now I'll place my still wet transfer on the panel. Be sure to use a spoon to work out any bubbles that may be under the paper. I'll place some books on it to provide constant even pressure as it dries. This will keep new bubbles from forming during the drying process. Once the transfer is fully dry, I'll take my spray bottle and wet the surface of the paper to begin separating it from the transfer. Again, slowly work the paper pulp off the image using a wet finger or toothbrush. Keep the surface slightly damp. This will give you better results. Do not use too much water or the image may start deteriorating. 
Drawing is a good way to add the element of line to your mixed media project, but be careful to test which mediums work well together. To demonstrate, I'll apply a strip of matte medium to this paper. Once it's dry, we'll test how different drawing mediums react to the new surface quality. First, we'll test graphite. See how the line of the pencil is fainter on the strip of medium. Pen and ink does a little better, but still struggles a little over the strip. Colored pencil behaves similarly to the graphite. Next, my brush pen does a little better, but it does reveal the texture of the brushed matte medium. And finally, a paint marker just glides over paper and medium both. So if you plan on using drawing as an element of your mixed media project, test your materials before you begin to figure out which order they should be applied. Adding sculptural elements to your work is a great option to add three-dimensional aspects to your work. To demonstrate how strong your matte medium is, I'll use this button as collaged element on this old demo painting. Add plenty of matte medium to achieve a strong bond. After it dries, it'll be fixed to your surface. It's a fairly durable bond, but be careful not to bend the paper too much. The objects may fall off due to surface torsion. You can also use matte medium to affix fabric to your work. Since it dries clear, it will not affect the texture of the cloth used. Here I'm adding a bit of lace to this image. First I'll prep the surface with a little medium, and then place the cloth on it. I'll then add a bit of extra medium over the lace to flatten it. Once it dries, it'll be a permanent addition to your work. Now turn our focus to a full mixed media demo. In this demo, we'll cover stencils, stamps, collage, painting, and adding three-dimensional objects to a piece. For this demonstration, I'll use this image of a skull I transferred earlier. Mixed media is a good way to explore the tactile qualities of physical artwork. Since transfers sometimes blow out or may have missing areas, I'll have to embrace the flaws in the work and integrate them into this piece. To isolate the image and better define the form, I'll paint around the edge of the skull. Some of the paper isn't quite removed and the medium from the transfer will be slightly raised, but this is fine as it adds a level of physical texture. I didn't start this work with a definite plan. I find that, for me, mixed media is an intuitive process and I kind of discover the work as I go. I found these assorted screws in my studio and thought they might make an interesting mohawk for the skull. Since I'm working on paper and the screws are a bit heavy, I'll use hot glue to fix them to the surface. Use caution when using a hot glue gun. The tip is always hot and be careful to keep it away from paper to avoid fire. I'm placing the screws from largest to smallest along the top of the skull. I'm doing this to hint at them receding into space and provide a little bit of perspective into the piece. Sometimes hot glue will leave these wispy strands. This isn't really an issue, as I'll simply remove them once the glue is dried. And now my skull has a little mohawk. I played with the idea of adding some drawing elements using pen and ink, but quickly decided against it. Instead, I'll add some texture around the composition with this impromptu stamp. Stamps don't have to be store-bought necessarily. They can be made of practically anything with a raised surface that'll hold paint. I found this piece of cardboard and liked the texture. You can use things like this as a stamp to add some repeating patterns to your work. The key to stamps is making sure enough paint is on the surface to transfer. I'm using a broad brush to kind of tap a little bit of paint on top of the surface. By using this tapping method, I'm making sure only the ridges of the cardboard get covered and not the valleys. Press firmly on the stamp and apply a bit of pressure. I'll repeat for a little bit until I feel I've put the necessary amount of texture on. Now I'll play with some stencils. If you remember from module one, stencils are anything that blocks or masks the application of paint. As I move to different areas of the work, I wipe off both the front and back of the stencil to make sure that the paint doesn't smudge or blow out. I have this stencil from an old project and thought this halftone pattern would be a great way to resolve the mistakes I made in the eyes. Each time I place the stencil, both brushing motion and jabbing motions are used to push the paint through the stencil. Now I'll grab a different stencil to add a graphic pattern to the side of the skull. It felt too isolated and central, so by putting a bright red shape here, 
I can integrate the image and better balance the composition. I don't want to go too crazy with the amount of patterns I'm putting in, so I'm trying to look for parallels in their shapes. I'll finish off by collaging some origami paper I had lying around. I think the pattern is interesting, and the delicate feel and look adds a nice contrast to the harsh screws and imagery of the skull. I'll tear the paper and place it around the picture plane to frame the composition. To paste collage paper onto the painting, I simply turn the paper over and cover the back of the strip with matte medium. Since the matte medium dries clear, I can add a second coat over the surface once it's placed. This will give the strip a bit more durability. Before I paste the strips down with matte medium, I test out where they work best. Don't be afraid to cover parts of the painting you previously worked. Mixed media is a technique that embraces the history of its own making. While collage is intuitive, sometimes it's important to see where things work and where things don't. There's a lot of trial and error that goes into this process. You may have to move a piece around several times or just ignore it and find another piece or you can tear or cut it down to the shape and size you need it. Ultimately, this process is about constructing an image. The goal is to slowly build the work piece by piece, assembling it as you go. Now that the origami paper has been collaged, I will finish by extending white paint to the edge of the picture plane. This will leave some of the textures I placed visible. I collaged two X's I cut from some scrap craft paper and placed them in the eye sockets to emphasize the graphic elements of the halftone pattern and mirror the red X's in the stencil. Once I was satisfied with the image, I cut the excess paper and photographed the work. While I didn't have an end image in mind, the materials I had at hand were selected with intent. I collected a variety of objects based around the aesthetic and theme I wanted to convey. I removed and added elements with these themes in mind. I was striving to achieve an image which mirrored my intent. As we wrap up, there are some things you should consider. Your mixed media objects and elements will act as visual points of interest. Design your composition around these elements. Collage is a great tool, and the things to consider with collage are how the image is ripped, how it's cut, what is the form or shape, how does the texture and color affect the overall composition. What do the individual images and their objects bring to the table? What's their compositional and conceptual purpose to the work? Things may not go as planned. Your images may tear or rip or break. The creativity in this project is how to approach these issues and integrate the history of the work into itself. Show process if need be. Mix and match various types of mixed media techniques. See what kinds of mediums work well together. It may seem daunting at first, but once you dive in, the process will seem more intuitive. This concludes the demonstration for Module 8. Companion PowerPoints for this module are available on Canvas. Module 8.1 has a list of artists for some inspiration, and the Module 8.2 has a step-by-step -step directions on the techniques demonstrated here. The project for this module is the Self-Directed Mixed Media Assignment. Using the skills you've gained this semester, as well as the techniques covered in this lecture, you're tasked with creating your own mixed media painting. The subject matter is entirely up to you for this assignment. Aside from your acrylics, you must employ at least two different media combinations in this work. Feel free to mix and match or use as many as you'd like. 